Ask Its Explanations, Part 3, Translation Explanation, written down by Ask Its Memory Aid on the 10th of September, 1964, in Marauli, India. Explanation dated from the 4th of February, 1953. Again, Ask Its Explanations were very long and elaborate. Consequently, it was late night before she finished her remarks. With the promise to bring me back to Jordan in the early evening of the 7th of February, 1953, we said goodbye, and I boarded the small ship still stationed at the same place that had brought me here two days earlier. The takeoff procedure was the same as I had experienced two days before, and the flight again took us high above the earthly atmosphere. The return flight was calm and safe, and I was dropped off again where I had also been picked up. I was barely a few steps away from the ship when it slowly rose into the air behind me and then shot up into the night sky at lightning speed and disappeared high above. The few days flew by, and in the early evening of the 7th of February, I was early at the agreed place to be picked up again for the new meeting with Ascot. It had just become correctly dark when I heard a very low whirring sound, just as if a helicopter rotor blade was swinging out nearby. Then a dark object sank down not far from me and touched down on the dirt road. Unprompted, I walked towards it and suddenly saw a slender figure emerge. It was Ascot who was now calling me. Together we let ourselves be carried into her ship, and already we were sitting in the very comfortable armchairs. I did not feel the slightest movement as the ship rose and shot furiously into the night sky. Only on various screens did I recognize the takeoff maneuver and the rapid flight away. Nothing else happened. The ship neither became transparent nor glowed. It simply remained as it was, solid, tangible, and stable. During the flight, not a word was spoken, and Ascot quietly busied herself with her apparatus. Then I recognized shadowy mountain ranges on the screens deep below us, towards which we seemed to be falling. But without feeling any discomfort, the ship suddenly came to a standstill from the frantic speed and simply stuck in the air for several minutes. But then it slowly started moving again and floated down to earth as lightly as a feather. As we let ourselves be carried out of the ship, I realized that we were back in the same place where I had been only days before. In contrast to Europe, the weather here was very mild. High in the sky, the stars twinkled a thousand times and a few different voices of the night could be heard. I felt comfortable and quite happy to be here. Ascot and I slowly walked hand in hand through the rocky wilderness and then sat down on a large flat block. It was here that Ascot began to speak after a few minutes. Ascot's explanation of the 7th of February 1953 in the Jordanian Desert Mountains at the Dead Sea. Verbatim reproduction of Ascot's explanations by her recollection aid on the 10th of September 1964 in Marauli, India. The time has now come in which you are to experience many things which, at a later time, will be helpful to you and many others in the search for truth. You yourself will thereby play a great role because you will become a fact of tradition. I have already explained to you the possibility of time travel into the past or future. In accordance with our technology, we are in a position to undertake such trips and to now also employ them for the benefit of your coming mission. As it has been decided, you will travel back with me into various epochs in order to be able to examine the truth of events there and then, and to recognize that your traditions and the assertions of your religious antiquity researchers, and so forth, are false and unreal and only in very rare cases correspond to the actual occurrences. But now we still have some time and I can explain to you that which is most important. Also, I still await a visit from the man who we recently met near here. Otherwise, we will look for him in the morning and converse with him. Only after that will we make the first trip into the past together. But now I still have many explanations to provide to you first. At various times you had pointed out to you your future path through life, which will be very wearying and burdensome. Right from the start you have already experienced and come to know that this corresponds to the truth. But the time of your apprenticeship is not yet finished, because it will still continue for about twenty years, during which you will experience very hard times and an enormously hard destiny. 
were it already very hard and burdensome up until now, in the future it will be very much worse. Yet be aware that you unconditionally must complete this learning if you want to do your mission justice. The next years will bring you into a dungeon and wartime military service outside of your homeland. You will have to pass through all stages of a fighting human in order to be able to very precisely acquaint yourself with everything. Because if you are to understand things, you can only do this if you come to know everything yourself through your own experience. It will also be the case with different vices in which you will yet indulge for learning purposes. Severe physical pain will also remain just as near to you as will psychic pain. In the earth human meaning, you will experience hell, whereby only then, however, will you learn to understand heaven. I will now say to you already, as Fath had already done, that in little more than ten years, you will have to take the hardest test of your life up to that point. Yet also this test in your destiny will be necessary in order to collect much knowledge. I largely know your future because I have penetrated it and I know that evil will befall you. A great change will take hold of your body, so you will suddenly live a completely new life. It will sound very hard for you just now, yet it must really be this way, and we are not able to change your fate, as it is not within our power. Our competence does not extend to these kinds of events. Consequently, we also cannot influence them. But it will be good for you to prepare for the coming event and to encounter the facts with clear reason. If you can do this, I will explain that which is to come. I have thought about this for a long time, and have also consulted with others about whether I should do this or not, because we know very precisely that earth humans cannot or can only extremely rarely cope with this kind of background knowledge. They want to be very hard and viable, yet this desire is only feigned. In themselves they are soft and unwilling, and do not want to bear their own burden. For that reason, they are also never permitted to come to know important things of the future, because they are not capable of processing the knowledge of coming things. But in your case we have unanimously realized that you are well advanced in regard to these things, and you are big enough, in yourself, to cope with everything using reason. I cannot yet tell you the precise date on which the event will confront you whereby you will lose your left arm. But it will happen in the days between the 1st and 5th of August in the year 1965. This is determined this way for you, through your life and all circumstances and it is impossible to avoid these events. But until then, you have somewhat more than a decade to prepare yourself, by means of reason. I will explain the precise and wretched circumstances to you later. The further events of your future are the following, which you, however, are never permitted to tell anyone. Explanations of the future, about myself personally, about which, however, I must be silent. Explanation of Friday, the 7th of February, 1953. There will be further events in which, shortly before the loss of your arm in Persia, you will be called something new, in fact, the name Billy. This naming conceals within it a great significance and will be very weighty. You will carry this name for all subsequent years, and it will bring you suffering and pain as well as slander, attempted murder and misconceptions, from outsiders as well as even from your closest fellow humans, from critics, those who are envious, know-it-alls, authorities, religions, and false prophets, and so forth. There will be extremely difficult years for you in which you will live and learn in further hells. Hate and foolishness against you will rise in your own family, whereby you will acquaint yourself with the last secrets of the human and his psyche, when someone in your family betrays you. Peace will finally only slowly come for you after a long time, namely when you have already long fulfilled your own mission. Only then will the signs of peace very slowly begin for you, because you will no longer take the attacks against your life and your mission seriously. But the time until then is still long and very many hard and wild events will roll over you. The name, Billy, intended for you, will become significant worldwide, and suffering as well as need and pain will threaten to drown you. 
But manage yourself in accordance with your reason and in accordance with your understanding because these alone guarantee your life. So, eight months after your accident, you will marry under very difficult circumstances after you meet your future wife at Christmas time, 1965. The circumstances of acquaintanceship up to the marriage in Corinth in Greece will be defined by extraordinary evil intrigues and evil entanglements from your bride's side of the family, whereby you will be forced to kidnap your bride, who, furthermore, will be only seventeen years old. Do not think, however, that after the wedding you will have gotten all your problems behind you, because the actual difficulties first start after that and will continue during all the coming years. In the first ten years of your marriage you will produce three children to whom you will give very old names. You will name a girl Gilgamesha and two lads Atlantis Socrates and Methuselah. No more children will originate from your marriage as three offspring per marriage is the number of the terrestrial norm. Also the birth of your children will bring you no peace and so the path of your learning will not have ended. Only in the year 1995 will your paths first begin to free themselves extremely slowly from the thorns. But until then, you will be completely left to your own resources during all the years and, during this time, also receive some further instructions or portions of teachings from us or from other intelligences. This is then the last and most burdensome course of learning which you alone must finish. You must, under all circumstances, withstand all these very difficult times, even if you will often not feel like it. In the year 1975, if the great danger of a universal catastrophe is averted, at the start of the year, as I already explained to you, another extraterrestrial life form, which says it is from the Pleiades, will make contact with you, after which you are then to begin to fulfill your mission. Work then, however, with all possible means of truth and righteousness available to you in order to fulfill your mission and to do it justice. In this time you will also come into contact once again with the biggest European UFO study community, which should make an effort to spread information about our doings. From that point, you will be invited to a congress, but this will be a very great knockout for you. The organizers will not want to come to terms with the truth, because they are very strongly biased through religious sectarianism. They do not want you to spread the actual truth so they will suddenly obstruct your path so you cannot appear at the Congress. It will be such that they do not want to acknowledge you as a new prophet because, in their aberration through religion, they are not able to recognize the truth. Despite this, however, you will go your way, and even before this point in time, shortly before you will bring your own publication to life in order to spread the truth. Thereby, due to the loving help of your best friend, you will be independent, just as your community, which you will call to life in the year 1975, will also be. But the fight for the truth will be very hard, because you will have to fight against the lack of understanding and lack of reason of sectarian ufological groups, and so forth, who are strongly anchored in the religious and in pseudosciences. In regard to that, take note especially of the coming worldwide organization for ufological work, MUFON, because, along with various pathological know-it-alls and slanderers of truth, it will be your greatest adversary. You will become loved and hated worldwide and also your life will no longer be secure. But you will not worry about that because by then you will have learnt to only amuse yourself about those kinds of threats and even about assassination attempts. Yet in spite of this, work quickly and precisely in order to fulfill your mission, because the time passes very quickly, and the laying aside of your body on the date of my death is named here, and the precise time of my death, which, however, for certain reasons I am not permitted to name, does not allow you to put it off. At the beginning of the second half of the year 1975, the German ufological study community, Duist, will lead the first strike against you. That is to be foreseen, and so you will take up contact with this place early. 
You will do this under the name Billy, which will be given to you in the year 1965 in Tehran, Persia. This is also the time in which the great change in your life will come about. But protect yourself then from the intrigues directed against you, which will be shot at you like poison arrows. Be also very careful then that you again eradicate the second name, Phantom, given to you in Persia, because by then it will have served its purpose. Allow yourself, along with the name Billy, to again be called by your real name, Edward, which you were already, significantly, given at your birth. This name contains the meaning, Guardian of the Treasure. And in the truest sense of the word, by the year 1975, you will have become the guardian of an enormous, and for the humans, very important, treasure, namely, the guardian of the treasures of truth, knowledge, wisdom, love, and peace, the guardian of the true teachings of the spirit, because it represents the greatest of the earth humans' treasures. Thus, make an effort, towards the end of the year 1975, to eradicate the name Phantom, which was valid until then, and allow yourself to be called only your name given at birth, Edward or Billy. Various things will also develop in the world itself at that time which will be of very great significance. An American man of peace named Kissinger will do big things in the times to come, yet peace will not favor him. Then, soon after that, a serious misfortune will befall him. He will be named Angel of Peace, yet he will not be able to prevent a violent war breaking out between Israel and the Arabian countries towards the end of the year 1976. All this must happen because, after the averting of the great catastrophe, new paths will already be trodden again to place terrestrial peace in question. Thereby, Israel plays a very important role because this country will be insulted by being called the least competent by all the control-demanding Arabian rulers. That is why the Israelis will still be, for a very long time, the basis for dispute and strife for discord, war, and bloodletting, just as they always, for millennia, were often the basis for that, for which they often bore the blame themselves. Something important is still to be explained to you, namely, that the most varied swindlers in UFO matters will spread worldwide, and that you should never, of your own initiative, accuse them of fraud. Always refer to us in regard to the naming of the swindlers because these statements stem from us, and not from you. In spite of that it will, however, be that you will be made responsible for the naming of the swindlers, and it will be said of you that you would accuse all contactees and so forth of lying. Even though that which will be asserted about you in the future will really not be true, you should not disturb yourself about it. Sooner or later the truth will break through and the mourners will be those who have appraised you as having engaged in something dishonest. If I and others speak of swindlers, then we therefore do this in a responsible way, because we know the truth and many events of the future, and thus also have recognized, and invariably will recognize, the swindlers. And there will unfortunately be many of them, conscious as well as unconscious. But it is devious and false if later, from the year 1975, it is asserted that you or we would insult all contactees and so forth by calling them swindlers. That is truly not so, because there are actually very many contact people on the earth, even if most of them only make visual contact or do not know about their contacts, which are in the form of impulses, or because of that they unconsciously wrap themselves in silence. If we therefore speak of there being only few actual contact people on the earth, then we speak of those to whom we transmit unconscious impulses, and who were truly sought out for a mission, even if this mission is only unconscious, and it is of moderate value. Swindlers have, however, already mixed themselves among these few, which will also occur in the future. By the year 1975, therefore, at least seven seven, Earth humans, becoming known worldwide, will appear who will fraudulently present themselves as contact persons, and such liars and swindlers will increase in large numbers. 
many of them will be exposed as swindlers only very many years later. At the present time, 2.7 billion 2 billion 700 million humans live on the Earth, of whom many have observed our beamships or other beamships belonging to our Federation or belonging to those who are strangers to us. But there are only four Earth humans from this mass who had or have contact with extraterrestrial life forms, whereby I speak of telepathic impulse contacts. But up until now, only very few of them came out into the public to announce their knowledge. Their mass will increase only in the much later time of the coming new millennium, whereby, however, swindlers will also creep in again. You know that the number of those who have actual contact with extraterrestrials is very small. There are really only some very few, indeed only those four persons, out of a mass of around three billion three billion inhabitants of Earth. As you therefore know these things now, you should not get upset about that which comes, because in the future, evil and unreal reproaches and defamations will be made, especially from America and Switzerland, as well as from Germany. In the future, your and my words are to be written down by you. But this will, however, first happen in the year 1964, whereby I will then be helpful to you. Our technology is developed so far that, with it, even after centuries, we can still entirely and faithfully reproduce the reality of once obtained impressions and spoken words, and so forth, in every detail and word. So it is therefore not important if you, with my help, only write down everything in 1964. With all of it, it is only important that I listen to every spoken word, and can also register your thoughts, feelings, and perceptions, whereby it is all stored in my subconscious. Therefore, tomorrow, when we undertake the trips into the past and partly also into the future, it will be important that I am always near to you so I can register everything in my subconscious. A further important factor is that in the various epochs and in the most varied lands of the past and future, the most varied languages also predominate, of which you naturally have no command, because, in this life, you have never learnt them. But this signifies no difficulties for you now, because we have small technical devices at our disposal, which transform any language or other kind of communicative sound into a desired form. Accordingly, we call them transformers or translators. They are very small in size and can be fastened to the belt. I will give you one such device, whereby you can understand any language as desired, and in this way also, your language will be understandable to any others. But now I feel tired. Therefore, let us go to the beamship and lie down to rest. <laughs>